Okay, we'll come back. You guys, Nori is here, and we can play Stem Water today. Uh, let me just adjust the this is the sitting, guys. Markita, main Stem Water. Hari ini, guys. To kreditnya. Hmm. Upload. Okay, this is what you need to save. Option. Yeah, there's something with the music. Should I lower it down? Put it a little bit higher. Maybe just a little bit higher. There is this one. Most of the game tend usually tend to have a big music. I mean, a big volume. This is a work of fiction. The resemble the rumbleness to in real life purely coincidence. This game contains depiction of horror mutual themes, violence and strong language. Pure history advised. Okay guys. Make sure you read this. If you wanna if you wanna watch the game till the end, go ahead and watch it. If not, don't watch it till the end. It's for adults. A horror game, but without themes. Car trigger. I'm sorry, but I can't say stay here anymore. Nina, I feel like I am going crazy. Okay, car trigger. Calm down. If we can, we can just talk it out. So many strange. Things keep happening once or after another. Okay, every day there is a damn dripping sound. I thought it was just uh, some leaking at first, but uh, I'm having running nose in the morning, guys. Okay, anyway. Okay, there is something wrong. I check every few set, every ceiling, everything, and still. Ah, you have to DM dia nya. Still I hear it is everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Okay, what do you mean by that? Please listen to me. Oh, but the water, the damn water. Water? Man, I can't believe what she's saying. And it is creepy. Yes. It's everywhere, pools of it, all over the house. And every time I try to move it all up, another will appear. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. She's saying there is water everywhere. There is no end to it. Mana, dari mana airnya? But at night, it is at night when it comes. <laughs> That's creepy. What are you talking about? Maybe the music are creepier. I had someone or something walking along the hallways at night. Okay. Okay. Dia yang gak bisa diam karena ada yang jalan-jalan. Maybe it's just my grandpa, my grandfather. No, Nina. It's not him. I thought it was, but it's not. But I've seen it. That thing. <gasps> he saw the thing. I on I only glimpsed at it once, but I am more than certain that thing was not your grandfather. Ever since that night, I would lock my door and pray it would walk past my room. <laughs> That's so creepy. I don't know what's going on, but I swear, it just keep walking, always walking on the water. Sometimes I hear it them randomly, their steps are erratic and faint, but I still can hear them. Okay, that's weird. That's really weird. <laughs> I mean, the music are scarier, I can imagine what she saw. Dari mana airnya kamu yang ini? Air apa hantu? Just this steady space up and down the halls. Hmm, okay. 
but I think recently it's no longer like that. What do you mean? Okay, we had the same question. What do you mean? Ya, yeah, apa maksud kamu? Every morning I follow to see where the wet footprints. Okay, it walks out something more girly than before. Uh, okay, it would walk down the halls, climb the stairs, and turn the corner. All of it I follow. Eventually, the trail would come to stop, and it would stop right by your grandfather's room. Ah, uh, uh, his room. If this is some sick joke to scare me away, then please stop. Okay, Nana doesn't take it. I mean, she can't believe what the caretaker is saying. But I guess she has to see it by her own eyes. I guess. Apa yang kamu lihat? Asisten rumah tangganya gak bisa diem di rumahnya karena ada yang jalan-jalan. It's not a joke, Naina. I meant what when I said there is something wicked going on in this house. That can't be true. I know this is a lot, but you have to believe me. <laughs> I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Naina. Oh, unfortunate. It's okay, I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather up until now. And I am sorry for all the stress I've caused you. I'll be sure to pay you right away as soon as I... I now listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The man on the phone cautiously look around, turning her head constantly. Back and forth, looking over her shoulder to find if any others listening in. Ah, uh, she grabs the phone so close to her ear in vice like a grip. <laughs> okay, before speaking again in the hushed town. Okay, okay. Something trouble is lurking in this house. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. Okay, it is getting creepier. Leave? I can't just leave everything behind. We have nowhere else to go. Please, Nana, this place is not safe. The rumors, they are true. The cause is real. My family is not cursed. But Nana, at this rate, you and your family will... Okay, enough. A pause, cold and sharp, tense. Tenseness trains the call as both women, exhausted and, st- and stressed beyond their comfort, try to stifle their growing frustration toward one another. Neither yielding to the other thoughts, only leaving anger on her to fester through silence. After what feels like a suffocation stillness, Nina finally say heavily and responds bluntly to the caretaker. Look, I don't know what you heard or saw, but I can't just leave things like that. However, whatever they are, they will answer to me. I won't let them have their way. I don't have time wasting my energy on this stupid course. So, if you can't help me, then so be it. I will find a way. I know. My grandfather is all I have left. He's all I have left. Okay, is that thing? He's there. Oh my god. Diner 7am. Aim a foggy morning. There sits a man by the corner of booths. Of a booth. He drinks black coffee and depending on his mood occasionally orders a donut. Yo, he ordered a okay. And today it was just black coffee. Uh, okay. I swear I've never seen that amount of pepper in my life. 
a freaking mountain worth of it. You are a valuable member of our team, Yoga. <laughs> My foot. Okay, I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Oh. Hugo Laura, age 30, takes a good look at this at his cup of joey and chucks it all in one sitting. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night crawling work at the office. I will need to find them a different job. Mm. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out toward the early morning. There was something inherently terrifying about the box gym, how it engulfed everything and nothing. Mm. How do you, what do you call this feeling? Nostalgic? But I can't understand, that, understand it. Let me get my coffee. I need my coffee. Even if it disappears, it leaves behind traces. Prove it. Proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, cringe, I can't even run from my faith, I guess. Hmm. Another feeling of living in town. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Oh, living in town is not an easy life. I get that. You wanna go to a bigger city. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all our past headline of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating the case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things comes with a price. Hmm. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. <laughs> okay. Sound rough. Mind if I join Koya? Koya. An annoying familiar voice interrupts his train of thoughts. He slowly looks up. <laughs> okay. Looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Good morning, Hyogo. Oh, very charming. Hyogo scolds and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the binder. Binder, binder, binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this an invitation and sits at the opposite end of the booth. Oh, come on, Hyogo. It is your friend. Tutamon kamu. Iya kan? Kenapa kamu yang begitu sama dia nya? Kalau bahasa saya, mukanya itu potom. <laughs> But the other person is charming. The other one is what do you call it? grumpy. He greets the waiters. He greets the waiter passing by and orders himself a hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to to, uh, to rely his order. Okay. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and he now jumbles newspaper clippings all the while. Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Yeah, you should eat something with that black coffee, man. Not ordering any donuts today. I'm fine, Noah. It just not. I'm just not in the mood. Okay, not even a little. <laughs> There is a momentary silence between them before Noah. This top 
it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. Two. As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. <laughs> okay. The food arrives at the perfect timing. Fucking mm. on your bank, guys. Why the hell did you order it for the two of us? It's a big breakfast. Just eat what you want to eat. Don't worry about me. Grumpy. He is grumpy. Oh, he's being grumpy. Mom. Mukang Mahsahrup. Mukang Mahsahrup. Is that how? Mukang Mahsahrup. Right, you go. Mukang Mahsahrup. Are you even listening to me? <laughs> Come on, we both know that that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will, and I am not about to let you faint again. So open wide. Noah Delion, age 27, a natural born charmer, is also the one person, the only person in the world who lovingly threatens him to eat every day. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. Well, good thing he listened. At least he's French. It is good, right? Good food will always help cheer you up. Damn him, I got swept away again. <laughs> oh, by the way, the chef will be out the sheaf. She, Sheriff she will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Hmm, yesterday, I think. Yesterday, she told me to sort out the cabinet. Yesterday, she didn't mention anything about the business trip. Maybe because of your grumpy face, she didn't tell you. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean. She did tell me to tell you, and lucky me, I know where you go every morning. Uh -huh. That the that the luck of having a charm personality. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically we technically have a day off. Yeah, you buy. We bought our feet for the day. I'm gonna head back to the office. There are a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Okay. Why? You could just rest for the day. Man, man, man. Being around you is fun. Because you are all grumpy dead. I mean, grandpa. And pass up the opportunity to get to know you better, Koya. Quit it. After that, Enlightenment banter. The two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo. Hugo's car. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. Oh, the bloodhound. The big dog stares at the sound of the car opening. And lazily stares at Noah. Ah, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closes the door while trying to make too much, not to make too much noise to disturb the occupant, Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy laded eyes slowly peeks to see who calls for him. It is his owner. It is his one and only partner. Is he human? Oh. As if finally realizing who he is or where he is, the old bloodhound stares up from his sleep, punches at Yogo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. But, okay, Colby. 
Good morning again, Gobby. Had a nice nap. Eight years, Gobby. Gobby, eight years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in the crime had the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back seat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Yogo's sudden struggle energy. Noah, it doesn't matter how many times I try when it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Golby. Well, it is his favorite animal, of course. The three head back to the office. The space is just the same as Yogo left it. A decent organized mess. Just credit for the amount of boxes the pain takingly went through. He believed he did a fair job. I'll bite. It could have been better. Oh, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. Hmm, yeah, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. They are good partner. One is grumpy, the other one is charmer. It looks less crowded, less crowded. Shut it, Julia. I said I was gonna get to it. Thanks, boy. Before Hugo could continue to give deserved head pats, he noticed someone. Oh. A woman stands timidly peering outside from the sort room. She looks a bit frantic and even more restless with her disheveled and ill fitted clothes, drawing aim faces to her already too visible pitted frame. The woman tries to grasp the door handle several times but stops before she could touch it. Okay, what's wrong with her? How do you solve voicing? Chapter windows. Um, what did, what did, after choices? Unseen tags. Um, what did I, what did you do? There should be, yeah, there should be. I wanted to save. There should be an option for that. I did try to play this game before, but, uh, oh yeah, there is a menu. Save. Okay, 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 okay. Let's uh, save here. Exit. If we quit, we're gonna go to the main menu, to the title. The woman tries to grasp the door handle several times, but stop before she could touch it. Hmm. No, no, no. Her brows furrow agitated and distressed so much to the point it is preventing her from just simply reaching out for her. However, when she finally makes eye contact with Yogo, she immediately rushes in. I'm, s I'm sorry. I know that the closed sign is up, but I saw you c came come in, and I. Okay, it's fine, girl. It's fine. Are you alright, miss? I need I need your help. My grandfather he's before she can continue explaining, Noah swiftly cuts in front of Yogo and intervenes an all too practic manner. Uh -huh. Okay. Professional Noah in the way. It's okay, miss. I will, we will hear you out. So please why don't you sit right over there? Noah just to one of the empty seats. At the other side of the room, the poor woman hesitates for a moment. She clutches desperately to the straps of her paws, her eyes focusing apprehensively on them and at the gesture seat. After mulling over Noah's offer, she quickly glances back. The woman then walks toward the corner of the room and sits at the edge of the sofa. Her posture is wary and tense, giving no sign of comfort. 
for even a, this brief moment. Can you start off by telling us your name? I apologize for earlier. I am usually a bit more composed than this, but I guess I'm failing at that too. Hmm. My name is Nina Mortimer. Ah, hello, Miss Nina. My name is Noah Delano. I am one of the assistants here. That bad guy next to you is our other lovely assistant, Colby. Oh, okay. And the one brooding here, over here, is Private Investigator Hugo Lord. <laughs> okay. I'm not brooding, I'm just tired. You are brooding, man. I know our chief is away on business, but I think we can still accommodate you. So how can we help, Miss Nina? For just a moment, Nina appeared a bit more lax, more helpful. Hopeful. Um, maybe even rely from this warm welcome. She's a bit more relaxed then. However, she once again tenses up. The guilt and shame come rushing back to her, visible by the creases on her bra, as she once again realizes why she is here. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Tonight. Yes, I know this is a strange request, but my hands are tied on this. What do you mean, Nina? It has to be. It has to be tonight. I'm sorry, Miss Nina, but I don't quite understand. Is your grandfather in any danger? Mm, I think someone is trying to take him away. Oh, take him, Miss Nina. I think you should contact the police right away. They are far more equipped. At handling this kind of situation. No, they are not. Okay, she got panic. I've tried requesting their help, but they've given me the same answer verbal type for weeks now. Okay, there's no help with the police then. They would send someone out to watch over the manor for right, but by the end of their routine, they would Okay, they saw no one else leaving or arriving at the house other than me or the caretaker. Hmm. And despite telling them all the details about the letters and all the strange things that's been happening, there is nothing they can do about it. Just sit around until it escalates even more. I can't wait any longer. Any more than this. Then it's all be too late. Hmm. If only, if only I know who Louis was. Louis. She lets out a gasp. Her hands shut out to cover her mouth, realizing she had said too much so carelessly. She's desperate. She tries to avert her their gas, but Hugo stares. Persistently at her. Miss Nina, who is Lois? Are they the ones chaosing all of this? One more. She contemplates. Her brows knit closely together as she bites her lips nervously. It is if the words she wanted to say have suddenly died out. Too heavy to even utter. A mistake she can't take back. Before the silence stretches further, Noah speaks to Nina with a gentle and reassuring tone. Miss Nina, I'm not scary. All of the things you've mentioned to us so far, no one should ever have to experience. Yeah, especially by themselves. Then I assure you, we'll listen to all of it. Promise. Wild and manic eyes search deeply at them, trying desperately to discern, discern any doubt or mistrust on their face. However, all she sees are people who are willing to give their time, their time to simply listen to her, to actually help her. From this alone, Nina looks to the side where she paused 
where her paws, her pute paws, tucked inside one of the pocket, she takes out a single slightly crumpled envelope with a pigmented red wax seal pressed in the middle. Okay. At glance, Hyogo can tell right away that these letters appear to be a bit more worn out and antique, and yet despite its delicate form, it remains well preserved, well kept. It is as if the letter itself was untouched by time forever, waiting to be opened. Grandfather has been receiving cryptic letters from the past month now. Past month? The letter didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. But this one is different from the rest. It has the name Louis on it. As she hands over the letter, Yogo notice her hand slightly shaking. Nina is still avoiding his gas and he knows she is trying to in earnest. earnest. But before he could reach out his hand, he sensed it. A faint shift in the room, untouchable to the others, but all too, but all too glaringly clear to him. There is something very wrong with these letters. Suddenly, Yogo recoiled his hand away, like being struck with something sharp, so spontaneously, so memorable, that even if the pain disappears within a second, a hint of it remaining. I need, yeah, I need to, yeah, let's, the music is, uh, the say it's flower. I need to, I just needed to volume it up. Something so small, akin to a prick from rose thorns, or more like a paper cut. Yeah, Yogo. Are you alive? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. No, I'm fine, Miss Mortimer. It's not your fault. It is not your fault. Hmm. Hugo stare squarely at the cut. A thin red line starts to form slowly by the top of his index finger, trailing down and stopping just above the first crease. A red soccer visible. It's daunting. That doesn't look like a normal pepper cut to me. Let me get you a band-aid. You know what? It's goodly. Okay, it's fine, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. But really it's fine. It doesn't even hurt. No one one good look at him before saying exact expressively and sitting back down to his chair still eyeing on Hugo's hand. Hugo shrugs and don't his attention back to the letter, but this time, luckily, nothing happened. For it to reach all the way out here where just a letter along is truly terrifying. Okay, carefully, he removed the content of the envelope and unfolded it. At first, it looked like any other normal letter. A person named Louis is asking the other Henry to come meet him by the lake at midnight needing to share something important with him. Huh. However, what really is striking, striking about this is not the letter itself. What do you mean? Peering at the bottom of the page, a message crawled unlike the rest, stand visible out to Yogo. Hmm, unlike the rest stands visible to Yogo. A message that shouldn't be. Remember our promise, Henry. What? When did you receive this letter? Yesterday. And your grandfather, where is he right now? 
he is currently back at the house with the caretaker. I promised them I wouldn't be out for too long. I made an agreement with them, you see. Oh, what sort of agreement? The caretaker. We have now agreed to watch over my grandfather, but only during the day. Before nightfall, they would leave exactly at the same time. Before nightfall? I wanted to believe that this whole thing was an elaborate shame to scare my family away. I know this sounds crazy, but one point I thought everyone was it on it. The mail carriers, the officers, the caretaker, the mail carrier, everyone had a hand at making out our family suffer. But this one has different. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Hmm. Not a relative or a family friend. But they clearly know who grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I will lose I will lose him too. Oh Naina. Just by uttering the words alone, Nana began to break down. The stress, the anxiety, the fatigue, all of it was finally catching up to here to her. Her body hunches forward, her hands pressed close to her eyes as she tries to cover the steam of tears running down her face. Oh, Naina, it's okay. As an act of comfort, Golby sits closer to Naina while Noah fetches dishes to her. Hmm. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. She says the whole thing has been going for the past month, but something doesn't add up. Yeah, there is something that doesn't add And before nightfall, I think there is more to do. She's not telling. Whatever happened with the letter from more than certain. Certain that whoever or whatever Louis is, they are coming from blood. Uh, wait, should I reject or take it? Okay, before we do that, we need to save. Okay, the empty slot one. Uh, two. Okay, what happens if we reject the case? He'll go cast his face down to start directly at the ground in front of him, unable to look at Naina. The board and the solitated, the madness Yogo knows all of it too intimately. He suffers the same conflict that weighs heavily on her mind. And yet, in spite of this, it's too much for him. Like walking along a tight roof with the ground void and unclear, vast, and empty, and dark. So very, very dark. No, I can still do it. We can still do it. Before he could respond, a distant voice so charming, so terrible, commanding, binds him at the spot. It's already too late for them, you know. Oh, Yogo. No, not here. A dull but yet distinct pulsating sound. So rhythmic, so rhythmic in its tones. Starts. It starts. It's maddening melody. From the top of his crown down to the base of his skull. He feels it all present and doubting. Just let it go. Let me help you. Just let go. Let me help you. Or me. No, I can't do it. If you could just let me. Snack like hand warm around his head. So closely squeezing over so tightly that he can't help but try to shut his eyes from the pain. Such a kind person you are, Hugo. Hugo tries to ground himself, he tries to remind himself to breathe, a sweet and beloved friend. To remember there are other people that care for him, the joy and warmth of their company. I wish you could have done the same for me. 
Huh? Do you mean to remember that he is here in prison? That he is useless? Do you mean? Okay. Hugo, what's wrong? Hey! Sugging at Hugo's coat, no one tries to catch his attention but fails as he noticed something amiss. Hugo, there is a despondent look on Hugo's face. His eye distinctly shrouded by a deep has as he was in. He won't budge no matter how many times. No one tries to tug or shake him. He still will not respond. But for Hugo, he can hear everything. Like a paralysis, he can't wake from his body sits there, motionless and detached from everything. Desperate and concerned, Noah turns to Nina and ushers in a sincere apology. I'm sorry, Miss Nina, but I don't think we can help you at this moment. If we just come back a bit later, no, it's fine. There won't be next. What do you mean? Hugo winces at her cold and blunt remark. No, wait, Miss Mortimer, please. Ah, oh, come on, Hugo. He wanted. Dinah stands up abruptly from her seat. She whips away her the tears quickly from her reddened face to the sleeves of her coat and looked down. Oh, one more. Her tense and cold front like demeanors returns to the forefront. A lady trying to forget and move on. Oh, come on, Hugo still want to talk to you. Without so much as a word, she slightly bows her head toward them and walks out of the office. Not once looking back. Bad ending. Pulling strings. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, thank you guys for watching, and I hope I can see you in my next video. Bye-bye.